Welcome to the Krista Escamilla Show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Chris Escamilla Show. I'm so glad that you're spending some time with us. And I have to say, I am so excited about today's guest because she has been a friend of mine for over, oh my goodness, are we going on 15 years? Pretty close. Pretty close yeah. to 15 years. And she is just an amazing person, and I cannot wait to share her story with all of you. So please welcome to today's show, my friend, Shauna Garcia. Shauna, thank thanks you. for being here. Thank you, thank you. Of course, we want to thank all of our sponsors before we get started. So, hey, thank you so much, West Texas Premix Pits, for sponsoring our show, Rig ID Workwear and Midland Cap and Cup. We could not do today's show without you. I mean, we, we could. We could be sitting <laughs> having lunch together. We could. Uh, or a glass of wine together. Uh, but there just wouldn't be any cameras. But today we get to do it with cameras and with the microphone. And we get to share your story that will inspire others, I know. Aww, and so I'm you. just, I'm so excited. So first, let me tell you a little bit about Shauna. Uh, besides being an amazing mom, she is an amazing businesswoman. And her um, her title, you know, we all have these titles in, in, wor- <laughs> in our world, business development manager for Benchmark Mortgage for OMG. Yes. I'm going to let her explain OMG. Well, OMG is just an acronym, of course, but it's Odessa Midland and Granbury. And we have the same owner, Tracy Robinson, on all three. So um, an amazing team, amazing loan officers, and um, just really blessed to be with a great company. Now, Shauna, I love your story. We want to start pretty much at the beginning because okay. uh, you are a true, uh, I mean, a true from from the bottom to the top story. You really are. You come from humble beginnings, and you have a great story of how you got into the real estate business and then therefore mortgage mm-hmm. business. So we're going to talk about transitions. But first, I want to know how you met Bill Lanier, because that's how I met you is through Bill Lanier. <laughs> well, you know, um, I think anybody in Permian Basin, we all work for the oil industry, of course. Right. And for me, I was working at the time, three jobs, and put myself through school. And I was with Dowell Slumberger at the time. And 1997 happened. Oil went down. Mm-hmm. I got laid off. And I had to have a job, pay bills. Right. So I just went to wherever I knew to go, which was a temp agency. And they sent me down to West Texas Abstract on Wall Street. And I walked in and... Because like you said, humble beginnings, we never really owned a home as a child. So when they said, we're going to send you to a title company, I'm thinking I'm going to like a car title place or, (laughs) you know, something like that. So I walk in and they're sweet Marion Daly. And if you don't know Marion Daly, you've missed out. He is just an incredible man. And he was the owner at the time. So I went in, we had a great interview, and he hired me and started off at the title industry making six fifty an hour, and I was never so happy for that six fifty an hour. You were like, yes, I <laughs> yes. will take it. Yes. And you know, when, whenever, and, and I know many people have been through this before, especially mm-hmm. after the pandemic, and when you get that notice that you no longer working for a company, yeah. um, it can be kind of a shock to oh, the system. Big time. I mean, I was, I took it very personal. It wasn't personal. And it's, it's not personal. It's not personal no. at all. Yeah. And... But it, it's it's hard, and I can't imagine for men who have been doing it for years to go through that and have a family. I was a single girl at the time, but it right. was very hard. But as we say, everything happens for mm-hmm. a reason. Yes. And because of that, yes. this then transitioned into you meeting Bill Lanier. Yeah, and my whole real estate career. I mean, I've not left since 1997, and I've done different aspects, of course. That was title. Um, I started, um, I got real estate licensed in 2005, became a broker in 13, but all the time that I sold real estate was always on the billionaire team and it was a great team. He was a great mentor. Um, I can't imagine learning from anybody better. And you truly are great at what you do. Um, and I can, I can vouch for it as, um, probably your um, best customer that never bought a house from you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> because we'd always say, hey, Shauna, what's this house look like out? Because, you know, out mm-hmm. in Green Tree. And you were like, I mean, within 20 seconds, she mm-hmm. would give me the rundown of the house. And it just never worked out that we bought mm-hmm. one. But I always thought, someday we're going to buy a house from you or we're going to mortgage a house. To yes, you. Yes. Because you are truly the best. And you Thank are you. Um, y- your customer service. Because that's mm-hmm. what it's all about, mm-hmm. no matter what aspect of business you're in. Mm-hmm. Customer service is key. Yes. What do you think has happened in customer service? Um, do you th- do you think do you think the pandemic did something to customer service? Um, uh, did it scale it either way? You know, for me personally, no. But no. I can see where in some of the service industries it did because mm-hmm. number one is I'll take out at restaurant industries for a while. Right. Um, so many people now meet in Zoom, mm-hmm. and it kind of, I feel like a lot of people lost that personal touch. 
Um, and it also made some people, I think, scared of other people. I know. I, I think you're right. Yeah. I think there was that. And, and I think it was just in general, the, what the whole world was mm -hmm. going through together. Mm -hmm. Um, there was, a, there's a lot of anxiety mm -hmm. and I think that that is one of the repercussions, but as you know, networking is key mm -hmm. yes. in business. And when I tell you that, that she is the queen of networking, she, <laughs> she'll probably go, I really never intend, intended yes. for this to be, <laughs> but you have done some amazing things, networking women. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's talk about, so we, we talked a little bit about real estate. Mm -hmm. You're now transitioning into mortgage mm -hmm. with benchmark, but you've also been a key connector of women. Women, which yeah. I love that about you. Well, thank How you. did this happen? You know, so for me to, to do this, I don't even know, maybe even 10 years ago, I would have passed out. It would not have happened. But really, again, back to Marion Daly, who was really a really pivotal person in my life. He saw something in me and he, I used to kind of walk into a realtor's office without just total panic attack. Mm. So he put me through Dale Carnegie. Oh, that's awesome. And the first time I got up and introduced myself, I really did almost pass out. Mm -hmm. I ended up winning the big award Yay. at the end of it, but it taught me some key factors in life and in general. So like you say, selling a house or selling a mortgage for me, once my mindset changed to that's not what I was selling, I was actually selling my service. Mm -hmm. And I know that I want to take better care of somebody else. You know, mm -hmm. I want to take care of them. So the networking aspect of it, in real estate, I know I'm not a cold caller. I'm not going to knock, knock, knock on doors. I'm not right. going to pick, pick, call somebody I don't know. So I want to work with people that know me and trust me. Right. And so as I was selling homes to a lot of old men, engineers, whatever, moving here for the oil industry, they had professional wives mm -hmm. who had become stay-at-home moms. They didn't know anybody here. Mm -hmm. So I came up with the fabulous women of Midland probably seven years ago. And it was just a way for my clients to meet other women like you or my other great friends, Brandy Bell, whomever started the group with me, to meet those kind of women yes. and get a great group of women together. Um, and it is fun because mm -hmm. once you once you do meet someone, you mm -hmm. are like, "Hey, what do you do? Oh, oh, I, I go I go get my nails done. I'd love to go mm -hmm. get my nails done yes. with you. Oh, I'm I'm good looking for a car. I would mm -hmm. love to come by for me. I'm looking for a house. I mean, really, you want as women, like you said, we want to do business with people we trust, people mm -hmm. we know, instead of just going hmm, in yes. the phone book. Wait, I just dated myself. There's no, I yes. mean, is there even a phone book anymore? <laughs> I don't even know. But don't you know, know what I mean. Yes. <laughs> instead of going Google. Yes. <laughs> And saying, okay, who's, you know, because it really is nice mm -hmm. that when you um, are there at your functions that you, you meet the new women mm -hmm. and you go, oh my gosh, I had no idea you did this, but yes. yet I've seen you at, you know, throughout town th mm -hmm. through the years. And so it really is a great way because I don't know about all of you, but for me, I want to be somewhere where I'm comfortable talking mm -hmm. to other people. Um, I don't want to go to a bar to talk yeah. to, you know, to, mm -hmm. to network. I, I want to meet people mm -hmm. in a, in a business setting or in mm -hmm. a, in a fun, relaxing mm -hmm. setting at someone's house. And that's, and that's what you've done. Started. Yeah, yeah, it started at my house and it was more, it was to let those women meet other women. It mm -hmm. did benefit me business wise. I did get business from it. Um, and it was small. There was probably 120 women at that time and maybe 20 or 30 would come mm -hmm. every month. We'd have it at my home two hours, drink wine, eat. Some women work, some women didn't, some women were retired, some were very young. Jean, our precious friend Jean, yes, come, come every I month and drink Jean. her water. She just wanted to be around all the women. I love it. And so transitioning to Benchmark, mm -hmm. I was moving to a new town, a new company, a whole new industry. I didn't mm -hmm. know people, I had to meet people. So I knew that the wine group worked. So I started one in Granbury and the very first one, oh, it was during the pandemic. Right. So it Which was is also, even harder yeah. to meet women and, and yeah, yeah. network. Well, right. it was a really cool way for me to get back to the community and start having it at local businesses mm -hmm. to bring people into their business. I love it. And so the first time we did it at a restaurant, again, I knew maybe five or 10 women there. Mm -hmm. There were 60 women. Wow. I was like, oh my goodness. But what that told me was these women were hungry. They missed each other. Mm -hmm. And so every month since then, we've had 60 to 100 women. And I realized with that mass of women, we could also make a difference in the community. I love it. So we've expanded it now more than just a mixer. We pick a nonprofit every month. And it's been wonderful. And, and now there's over, I don't know, 13 to 1400 women just in the Granberry group. So how does someone, if they're listening right now and they go, oh, I live in Granbury, oh, I live in, you know, Midland or mm -hmm. Odessa, or you have a new, mm -hmm. a couple of new ones mm -hmm. starting up, mm -hmm. how do they join the group? So we are just on Facebook. There is no fee. Um, it's just, <laughs> just click yeah, the, hey, fabulous, I want to join. Yes, fabulous <laughs> women of Midland, fabulous women of Odessa, fabulous women of Granbury, fabulous women of Parker County, and I'll approve it. And we have about 3,000 women between the four groups. It's pretty incredible. 
I love it. I am speaking to the fabulous woman <laughs> of Midland, Odessa, Granbury. Oh, She's everywhere. You. Shauna Garcia. We are having so much fun today. But right now it is time for what we like to call quote of the day. Okay. So you're going to get to pick your uh, quote out and then you okay. tell me. You can, you can read it or I can, whichever you want. Oh, you got the happy card. I'll let you read it. I love that. <laughs> she got the happy card. Uh, there is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. Luda. What For does that me, mean to you? Um, personally, I think we have the choice every day to be happy or not. Life Absolutely. happens. Life happens. Curveballs are thrown at us. Every day. We become a... <laughs> What is it? You become you become that circumstance, or you still find the the happiness in it. There's happiness everywhere. You I just got to find it. And she's a fellow quote girl too. That's <laughs> right. Uh, tell me, what is your favorite quote, Shawn? You know, um, golly, put me on the spot. I have I so many. So many. I still like. Um, there are friends for reasons. Mm-hmm. Seasons. Or there's seasons, and there's friends for reasons. Anyway, it's about basically. Everybody has a purpose in your life, whether right. it's a short term or a long term. Right. And that is so true. Mm-hmm. And that is, and I'm just so glad that you came into my life yes, for a, a reason and a season. And, and it's been and a great for a one lifetime. and for a lifetime because yes. it has been awesome. Yes. I, I love, um, being around people that inspire you and lift you up mm-hmm. and, and you're one of those people. Who is it that does that for you? You know, I've been golly, so blessed by so many people. Barbara Yarbrough oh. still will randomly call me. And that is the best voicemail. If you haven't got one from her, that is the best voicemail. I it have is. one that I've saved, and it just says, go look in the mirror, Shauna, and tell that person in the mirror you're fabulous. And she means it. Like, right. and, and she wants you to do that. You. Oh, you're you're a ray of you. sunshine. Every day <laughs> yeah. I tell everybody, thank Krista you. is truly as happy and positive as you think she is. Like, oh, that's not, that's real. Thank you. Um, I've had grandmothers that have influenced me. I have um, been blessed with coworkers, teachers throughout the years. I could name tons of them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've just been blessed with a lot of women in my life. And it shows. It really does you. because you are such a good, um, you, you're, you're, you're a girl's girl. Like you are, you are, you know what I mean? Like you are, uh, you're someone that's going to lift people up and you're oh. going to inspire them. And that comes, I really truly believe from other women pouring into mm-hmm. you through the years, because then it teaches you, you know what? I may have needed that when I was younger, mm-hmm. or I want to be that for someone. Mm-hmm. I want to, I want to circle back to something you said earlier about Dale Carnegie, because, um, when Shauna says that she would not be sitting behind a, a <laughs> <laughs> microphone or cameras or lights, uh, I know I knew her, you know, for yeah. for many years before she did that, and I can see the transformation. And you have just blossomed oh, into someone that is yeah. comfortable now. I see you speak at your events, mm-hmm. and you would have never done that, mm-hmm. right, 10, mm-hmm. 15 mm-hmm. years ago. What did you learn there, in case someone else is going? You know, I could never do what she's doing now. The most, I guess, the maybe two or three things that I got the most benefit from Dale Carnegie was one, if you are speaking in public or if you're the head of a group or you're the leader, people are coming there because they want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. So they want to hear you speak, number one. So there's a confidence booster. Mm -hmm. Number two, be authentic. Yes. Don't speak about something you don't know. Mm, Amen. And if you're I'm not going to ever speak about rocket science. No. Right? No. (laughs) Or brain surgery. (laughs) And if you're speaking about something you know, you know it. Right. so just those little tidbits. And I also get nervous. Oh, my goodness. Before every, I mean, nobody knows that. But before every wine night, I like to say a prayer and thank mm-hmm. our sponsors. Sometimes I have to breathe through them because right. I still get nervous. Because I think I, as a woman, and especially mm-hmm. if you come from the beginnings that I had, every once in a while, that little voice comes in and your confidence level goes down and you get that self-doubt. Right. But you just have to remember that everybody puts their pants on the same. Right. And... um we're all here for a purpose, and my purpose at that moment is to be right there. I love it. I love it, and I think that's good that you know, because that that really kind of touches on something that um, I actually just heard this yesterday: the imposter syndrome, where you feel mm-hmm. like you don't belong in that room mm-hmm. or you don't belong in that position. Well, you do belong there because God put you there, right. and so you have to believe that you are there mm-hmm. for a reason. But sometimes that little voice gets yes. in there, and you just have to go like this. <laughs> to yes. that, little, that little voice and you ne- you need to knock them off your shoulder and go, you know what? I do belong here. I can do this. Um, and I never went through Dale Carnegie, but have done public yeah. speaking my whole life. And that's one thing that I've always believed in is what you just said is you've got to be yourself mm-hmm. and you also have to speak what you, you mm-hmm. know, what you know, speak about what you know. Um, but last that breathing thing is yes key in anything i don't care if you're i don't care if you're hitting a golf ball yes. uh, we, have, we have kid golfers I think, yes. if, if you're hitting a golf ball you got to breathe if you're getting up to mm-hmm. speak in front of a group of people you have mm-hmm. to breathe if you're negotiating a big contract and mm-hmm. you're talking money oh that can be a tough yeah. one right you just got to breathe and go you know what 
it's all going to work out the mm-hmm. way it's supposed to and everything's going to be all right. So another well, thing that I learned, just one little thing is yeah. it's none of my business what anybody else thinks about me. Oh, don't you? I love that. I love that it's, one too. It is mm-hmm. it's none of your business. Mm-hmm. No, all you can do is be yourself. Yes. And, and if they like you, great. If they don't, that's okay too. Yeah. You know, and that's a tough one to learn. It takes years and years to learn that. But once you can learn that, it's like it changes everything. Mm-hmm. It truly does. What's the biggest lesson that you've learned through the transitions of life? I know you've gone through, you know, many transitions mm-hmm. through the years. What is the biggest lesson you've learned? Um, well, right now I feel like my life is constant change. Um, and I am very analytical by nature. So change used to be extremely difficult for me. Mm-hmm. But if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. And I want to grow. I don't want to die. Right. And I, I mean that not physically, but just right. personally, emotionally, spiritually. And so I'm uncomfortable all the time, but that just means I'm growing all the time as a person, professionally and personally. Right. Cause it's better to grow than to mm-hmm. be stuck Yeah, and to be mm-hmm. and just kind of plateau there. Mm-hmm. I love that. And through those changes, um, what is, what is the thing that keeps you going to the next one? Like go, Oh, okay. So now this is happening. Cause I know you, you've made some major yeah. life moves and you, you know, major life transitions mm-hmm. with your um, son, Connor, who is the love of her life. He is. He he's, is. he's so amazing. Well, you know, at the core of everything, of course, he is a reason or a thought process of what I'm doing, but really, um, I think every stage in life is different. Mm -hmm. So when I was young, I just made choices because I had to pay bills. I had to survive. I had to eat. You know, I didn't really think about what my purpose was or my why. My why was just I had to have money. Right. But then as life happens, you know, hopefully you get uncomfortable and you grow. And so finances are still always important, but it doesn't become my why every day. Through all the changes, I think I've been able to slow down enough at this age in life. Mm -hmm. Um, when you get close to that five zero mark, <laughs> Woo! Um, you we're get there. To start, we're, we're close. I mean, it, <laughs> now it's time for me to figure out what it is that I really want and the purpose and the passions and the things that are important to me. And so kind of that's where I'm at. And this, this networking thing has been a deal. You know, there's been so many people that have helped me in my life and believed in me and promoted me. I want to do that now. I'm ready right. to give back. I'm ready to pour into women the stuff that I have been poured into me. Right. Because you never know who you're inspiring. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the beautiful thing about, about life and about mm-hmm. running into people that you know or someone that you see 10 years, 15 mm-hmm. years later. They say, you, you know, you remember that time you said mm-hmm. such and such or you put that quote up or you, mm-hmm. you know, or said this at that event. That really changed my life. Yeah. And when you hear that, you know, it, it just makes you go, wow, you know, because yeah. that's what we are here for. We are here to help mm-hmm. other people. And, uh, and, you know, of course, we're here to love others. But when even if you've helped one person or a million yes. people, it doesn't matter, you know, and I think I love that, that mm-hmm. that is your passion and that you're, you're you know, trying to help others kind of go through, yeah. what, you know, and grow, grow through what you mm-hmm. have. Um, let's, we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit more about fabulous women okay. in just a minute, but first it is time for question of the day. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. I feel like confetti should fall or something. <laughs> I just have confetti, cute little, oh, that works. Con- that yeah, works. that's close enough. Yeah. Cute little confetti card. So, okay. I'm not going to look. Nope. Surprise. Let's see. Oh, I think I know the answer to this, but I can't wait for you to answer it. All right, Shauna. First of all, trusting is her card, which you are one. I mean, really, when I think of trusting someone, I think of trusting you. So See, and I, I think that. I'm the most trusting. I trust everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so this can go both ways. <laughs> so you got the trusting card. Okay. What is or who is your why? Well, of course, my kid is my why. Yes, yeah. I knew that would he be is my it. why. Yes. Well, and, and understandably so. Connor is an amazing young man, a great musician, very mm-hmm. talented. Um, what is the thing that you've learned the most through being his mom? Oh, goodness. You know what? That child teaches me every day what grit and drive look like. Mm. I have never. I know I have it, of course. I mean, right. I'm not trying to well, he's brag. Seen but it, but I, he's seen it but from you. Yeah, yeah, I don't. And I think you can learn a little bit, but sometimes people just are born with that extra. And that child, anything he puts his mind to it's going to happen. Couldn't agree more. Adults could learn from him. Like the amount of discipline he has is beyond. There's a book called, um, that Angela Duxworth wrote called mm-hmm, grit. Mm-hmm. He's got grit. He does. He really does. And just to brag on him a little bit, cause I know she's not going to brag about mm-hmm. all the things that he's done, but he, a uh, great musician went to interlock in before mm-hmm. the pandemic. Yes. And then of course the pandemic changed things. He came back after the, you know, mm-hmm. through, through the pandemic 
and then just dove headfirst into golf, which Mm -hmm. if you know us, we're a huge golfing family. And Mm -hmm. I was just like, yes, you can do this. I'm like, I'm so excited. You're now a golf mom. And he has gone in, I mean, like I said, headfirst Mm -hmm. and is doing amazing. I mean, his scores have lowered. He's shooting 70s and 80s after being a, what would you call, like a hobby golfer? I wouldn't even call him a hobby golfer. I mean, he, as a little boy, he might have went like maybe two or three times with Mm -hmm. his dad. And then before we, before he left, him and his friends would go out there and play, but it was just like once every couple of weeks or something. It right. wasn't ever really even a hobby. Yeah. But when he got to Granbury, he didn't have friends and we lived on a golf course and, and there was a pandemic and yeah. you could golf through a pandemic. Yes. So, yes. well, he's done great and yes. he's doing an awesome job uh, going into his, he'll be going into his senior mm-hmm. year and, and going, you know, 150% with golf, like he has done with everything. Well, and it's... the thing about that is, and I tell everybody this and my child is not the best at anything, but he, that, what is it? Um, hard work beats talent every day. Mm-hmm. That's him. He puts in four or five hours of golf a day and one or two hours of working out and he goes to school and, and don't take him off his schedule. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Well, we wish him the, the best Thank you. because Thank I know you. he's going to continue to do great Thank things. You. Um, if you were to go back and, and talk to Shauna, say 18, 19 year old Shauna, mm-hmm. what would you tell her? It's going to be okay. <laughs> I love it's that. all going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. all going to work mm-hmm. out. And I think that's a good message for a lot of mm-hmm. um, not only 18, 19, mm-hmm. but maybe even 23, 24 mm-hmm. graduating from college or, or, or maybe they didn't go to college and they're mm-hmm. going, where, where am I going yes. next? Because I think at that age, mm-hmm. you, you just feel like, what's going to happen? Yeah. And it's a big worry. Mm-hmm. What got you through those years? Oh, you know, I am a pleaser <laughs> by nature. And so, um, you know... I, my dad was an absentee dad. My mom did the very best she could. She was a true single mom. I hear people say, oh, I'm a single mom, but I'm really not. I mean, Connor's father contributes financially. Mm-hmm. He has a relationship with his son. So I am a mom who is single, if that makes sense. Right. There's a difference. Right. And, but no, my mom I, I was agree. a true single mom. She didn't mm-hmm. have any help. So she did the best she could. Um, what was your question? Um, the the question was going going back and, you know, through what got you through the, okay. that like 18, 19, oh, okay. yes, where yes. you're just kind of like... Because I think everyone goes through it, no yeah. matter what, what. I mean, sometimes, I mean, heck, we go through it at our yeah. age. You know, it's like, what? what's the next season going to look like? You know, for me, at, I tell everybody I'm younger now than I was at 18 and 19. <laughs> so I was, I was working in three jobs. I lived on my own, put myself through school. Um, but I had those people that you're talking yeah. about. I had youth group leaders. I had church, my grandparents, people I just wanted to please so badly. Mm-hmm. That it kept me going. Those earth angels, that's what mm-hmm. I call them. Yeah. I, I did not want to disappoint anybody. And so just know that people are looking at you. Mm-hmm. And if you can make a difference in someone's life, you, I mean, my youth group leader still, I mean, I still call him every Father's Day, every Christmas, Aww. his birthday. He made an impact in my life, him and his wife that she's passed on. If anybody can learn anything from listening to this podcast right now, or watching, we're, we've got <laughs> both, we're listening, we're watching, um, is to remember the people and and send them a little something. Shauna mm-hmm. is the best at that. She will send a little shout out. She will send mm-hmm. like show up. I know when 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 my father passed, you showed up mm-hmm. at my doorstep. I mean, people. Gosh, now I'm gonna cry. No, don't do that. People <laughs> don't forget those yeah. things. They really don't. And the fact that you still continue to mm-hmm. to reach out to that that person that poured into you. Mm-hmm. That's what, if, if anybody can learn anything through this, um, it's that Maya Angelou mm-hmm. quote, people, they'll forget what you say, they'll mm-hmm. forget what you did, but they never forget how you made them feel, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And you do a, such an incredible job making people feel special and remembered um, all the time. I, we, I mean, I don't know how you do it because there's a lot of people in your life that you still pour back into, mm-hmm. which is great. I mean, well, because that I is feel beautiful. that I'm the one that's blessed. I feel yeah. so blessed to have them. Well, you know? That's awesome. Okay, we're, now we're going to circle back um, <laughs> to the fabulous women I love how you've uh, poured into nonprofits. That's mm-hmm. something we believe strongly here. We're, we're going to mm-hmm. actually do our share of the love that we do at the end of each show. And with that, you pick a different nonprofit at the mm-hmm. end. And I love it because, say you're at the meeting, mm-hmm. you you may not have heard of that nonprofit right. yes. before. And that actually happened recently when I attended one of your fabulous women. How did you come to that? You know, for me, again, it was always so 
again, going back to my childhood, my brother was the dress alive doll a couple of times. We were on free lunches, the Salvation Army. I mean, if it wasn't for some of those nonprofits, there's no telling what where we would have been. Right. And so I've always been intrigued by it, and I wanted to give back. I just didn't know how to do it. So 10 years or so ago, I joined Junior League of Midland because I wanted to learn more about the nonprofits, the charities, and I mm-hmm. actually ended up on PR&D, which is Project Research and Development. Yes. So it kind of gave me perspective on some, but I still just didn't know how to touch them. So when this thing happened in Granbury and it exploded, I just started researching. Mm. And so if I have a sponsor for the month and there's a nonprofit that's dear to them, that's who we support. So we've done non-kill shelters. We've done children's homes. We've done battered women's shelters. We've done Second Chance, which is a place that people don't think about. It's this Mm -hmm. farm, so to speak, that takes in these animals that are blind or deaf or whatever and gives them a second chance. Never heard of it until until your group. And so like in Midland here, we did one where they, people know that kids go through foster care. But they don't, what happens to them between foster care and when they are actually an adult? There's a whole season there that they're not really an adult yet. Right. And they're kind of forgotten about. And so we found that nonprofit and we were able to bless them. Mm-hmm. Like the, the actual group itself, we make no money. We, we don't take any money. All the money that we raise that evening through raffles mm-hmm. or donation goes strictly to that nonprofit. And I mean, I remember the first time it was like around seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, it's anywhere from seven hundred thousand bucks we raise every 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 time. Well, thank you for doing what you do, you do for all of our communities. It's truly amazing, thank and you. I I I know it comes from a good place because I know you personally. It's coming straight from mm-hmm. your heart, and and that shows. Mm-hmm. And so, thank you. thank you so much for sharing your story. Can you believe we're out of time? No, I what? know, I know. <laughs> I know. I told you to go by so fast. Uh, but first, we have to do share the love, and share the love is where we, at the end of each uh, episode, we then will donate on behalf okay. of our show and our guest of that week to a local nonprofit, and it's a way for us to kind of uh, shed light and, and like what you're doing with the groups, let people know about mm-hmm. some of these nonprofits. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the one that you highlighted last month in your group, okay. um, Mark, formerly known as Mark. So our sponsor last month was the agency Carrie Payne, and so she. That's her agents. They pick a nonprofit each month as well, and they give a portion of their commission back. So last month they were doing formerly known as Mark, which is now what is it? Spectrum it's now Solutions. Spectrum Solutions, yes. And it's for you know special needs adults, I believe, is mm-hmm. the main focus of it. And so that's what we did. I love that. So and that's who we're going to give our donation to oh, today. So awesome. thank you so much, uh, Sean. Is there anything that if I um, you know just looking at you, I wouldn't know about you, and I've read your bio, and you know just looking at you, we would not know about you that you want to just share with us, little tidbit. Um, I'm a math nerd. I don't hey, know. Hey, <laughs> see that? There you go. Didn't know, did not know that. I love that. That's awesome. Was that your favorite subject in school? Yep. Thank you, Barbara Yarbrough, yes, right? Math nerd, big <laughs> time. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today. And finally, is there anything you didn't get to say that maybe you want to share with everybody? Um, I think just recognizing people in your life that can promote you and you can promote them and just go and do it with all your everything you can just right. do it promote right. them and give them all you can what do you have to lose right yeah. Let, let's all let's all make this world a better place and that's yeah. that's definitely one thing you do thank you Shauna, for thank sharing you. today thank i loved you. our time together of course love spending time with yes. you and if you would like to reach out to shauna you can reach her at benchmark mortgage where mm-hmm. are your socials if you want to give them out sure um you can email me of course at shauna.garcia at benchmark.us um, my website is shauna garcia at benchmark.us and my cell phone is always available you want to get it's up to you this is going to go out i mean this is going out in the airwaves yes it's fine it's It's 432-559-6110 all right and she's the best she's going to make sure that she gets you taken care of and all your mortgage needs or if you want to join the fabulous women of anywhere (laughs) i feel like one day there's gonna be a fabulous woman across the united states that would be awesome it would be awesome and it's all because of you connecting other women and supporting women so that is fantastic so give her your business. That's all I have to say right now. Just give it to her. And also thank you so much to our sponsors again, West Texas Premix Pits, Rig ID Workwear, and Midland Cap and Cup. You can follow them on socials. Let me know who you want to see next in this chair. We would love to uh, just learn more about everyone. I feel like we can learn from each other. That's what makes the world go round is love and spending time together and learning from each other. And if you, there's someone you want to see in this chair, reach out to me at Krista Eskimi on all the socials, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Am I missing any? I feel, I don't know. Twitch. No, I'm not twitching yet. <laughs> My son does that. I don't even <laughs> know what that is. Do that. I don't I know. know. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, 
these online gamers. We, we need to talk about it on here. It's like the big thing. It's really cool. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for spending time. I love it. And as always, remember my motto is dream big, believe in yourself, and never give up. If you do those three things, you can do what Shauna Garcia did as well because she is a true success story, and we're so glad you spent time with us today. Thank you. You make it a great day. We'll see you next time.